Welcome, and thank you for choosing Ascension St. Thomas for your joint replacement surgery. We are excited to be your nurse navigators to assist and support you through your surgical journey and to help walk you through this joint class video. The purpose of this class is to help you feel informed, organized, and well prepared before your upcoming surgery. You'll learn how to get ready for your procedure, what to expect during your hospital stay, and important information for after your surgery. You will also get some important tips to make sure your transition from the hospital to recovering at home is as smooth as possible. So let's get started. I'm sure you have learned a lot about your joint and why your doctor has recommended you have your joint replaced. Please take some time to look through the section, what is wrong with your hip or knee in the living with a hip or knee replacement book provided to you at your preoperative appointment. In this section, you will read information about your joint and the parts that will be replaced. If you have specific questions about your implant, please reach out to your surgeon. Preparing for surgery. All joint replacement surgeries need some preparation in order to achieve the best possible outcomes. Watching this video helps ensure you and anyone assisting with your care are prepared for your surgery and recovery. In your home, make sure there are clear and wide pathways. Be sure to remove any throw rugs, area rugs, or anything else you could potentially trip over. Be aware of any uneven surface and use caution when crossing them to prevent falls. Put items that you use frequently at waist level. In your bathroom, place a non-slip mat in your shower or tub. Getting in and out of bed can be difficult after surgery. We recommend you check your mattress height before coming into surgery. You can do this by standing next to your mattress and seeing where the mattress hits you on your body. This will help the physical therapist practice with you in the hospital. If you have stairs at home, a physical therapist will also practice with you on how to properly use them. The best type of chair to sit in after surgery is a chair that has armrest. This could be a wing back chair, dining room chair, or office chair. Just make sure it doesn't have wheels on the bottom. We don't want the chair to get out from under you. You can also sit on the couch, but make sure to sit on a side that has an armrest on it so you have a place to help push yourself up. Right before surgery, clean your home, wash your bed linens, clothing, and towels. It is also important to prepare meals, gather supplies, and groceries. To help you heal effectively, good nutrition is extremely important before and after surgery. Arrange for someone to help care for your pet if necessary. One of the most important things to do before surgery is to choose your coach. This can be a family member, friend, neighbor, or you can have multiple helpers. Your coach will need to drive you to and from the hospital and drive you to any appointments after surgery, including outpatient physical therapy appointments. Medical equipment to help with your recovery. You may need some helpful items at your home to keep you safe and comfortable. Getting them in advance of your surgery will ensure you have time to practice using them. Most surgeons recommend patients start out using a front-wheeled walker, not a four-wheeled walker. This helps to provide stability and helps to prevent falls. The commode riser, shower chair, and hip kit are helpful items for after surgery as well, but they are not required. If you have the standard low toilets, the commode riser can be placed over it to make it easier to get up and down. The shower chair can be placed in the shower if you feel like you may need to sit down at any point during your shower. The hip kit consists of a sock aid to help you put your socks on, a long handled shoehorn to help you put your shoes on, a reacher to help pick up any items you may have dropped, a garment hook to help you pull up your pants, and a long handled sponge to help wash areas that you may not be able to reach. What do I bring to the hospital? Your stay in the hospital is not long. Some patients go home the same day while others spend one night. Your surgeon should let you know the plan before surgery. Whether you plan to go home the same day or spend one night, still pack an overnight bag just in case. Pack things like your personal hygiene items, toothbrush, toothpaste, deodorant, a couple of outfits, Loose fitting clothes like a t-shirt and shorts or loose pants work best. With your shoes, you want them to have a good rubber sole with a back or strap, no flip flops. 
If you have a walker already, bring it to the hospital so we can make sure it is a safe walker for you to use and is adjusted to your correct height. The preferred walker is a walker that has two wheels on the front. If you wear glasses, contacts, hearing aids, or dentures, make sure you bring your cases for them with your name on it. If you have sleep apnea and use a CPAP machine, bring the machine, mask, and tubing. We recommend bringing a pack of sugar-free gum to chew after surgery. This is part of our ERAS program, which stands for Advanced Recovery After Surgery. Please see the brochure that was provided to you at your preoperative clinic appointment. Bring your medication list. Avoid bringing your own medications to the hospital unless you are specifically told to do so. Your medicine will be provided by the hospital. If you have a living will or a durable power of attorney that you forgot to bring to your preoperative appointment, you can bring that and we will make sure it is scanned into our system. The hospital has free Wi-Fi, therefore you can bring your phone, laptop, or tablet to use in your room. Before surgery, it is important to clean your skin with the surgical soap that was given to you in the preoperative clinic. This helps reduce your risk of infection. Instructions on how to use this soap were provided with the information at your preoperative appointment. You will begin using the surgical soap once a day, starting four days before surgery, and once again on the morning of surgery, for a total of five uses. Use this soap to wash your body from your neck to your toes. Be sure to get everywhere you can reach. Ask for help if needed. Do not use this soap on your face, hair, or genitals. You can use your regular soap and shampoo for those areas. Please do not use the surgical soap if you are allergic to it or have a history of any skin conditions such as eczema, psoriasis, or contact dermatitis. Use an antibacterial soap such as Dial instead. Please use a mesh shower poof or a clean washcloth and towel for each shower. Also, please remember on the day of surgery, after your last shower, do not put anything else on your skin or in your hair. This includes lotions, ointment, makeup, nail polish, perfume, deodorant, hairspray, or hair pins. Change your sheets and pillowcases on your first day of showering with a surgical soap so that you can sleep on clean bedding. Change your pillowcases and sheets once again the night before surgery. Do not shave within 48 hours prior to surgery. Do not eat or drink after 11 p.m. the night before surgery except you can have clear liquids up until two hours prior to your arrival time. This includes the pre-surgery drink, if you were given that in the pre-op clinic, clear liquids such as Gatorade or G2 for diabetic, black coffee or tea, no milk or creamer, water, apple juice, soft drinks such as Sprite, Coke, etc. Eat a light supper. Don't eat anything too heavy, greasy, or spicy the night before surgery. The day before, you will also receive a phone call to confirm your arrival time. Day of Surgery When you came to your pre-op appointment, you should have received a parking pass with directions on where to park. Place this parking pass on the dashboard of your vehicle. You will park on the sixth floor of the Mid-State Parking Garage and take the elevator up to the eighth floor. This garage sits at the corner of Church Street and 20th Avenue North. The Mid-State Garage elevators run from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. If you need wheelchair assistance, please call 615-284-8348. Once you arrive on the eighth floor, there is a desk just a few feet to your right where you will check in. Feel free to bring your belongings in with you at that point. If a room is available, they will take you straight to your private room. Your visitor will be able to wait in your room while you are in surgery. Getting ready for surgery. Your care team will ask you some questions to confirm your health history and medications. You will change into a hospital gown and when the team is ready for you, they will bring you to the holding room where they will get you ready for surgery. An IV will be inserted into your arm. You will meet with your surgeon and anesthesia team. Your surgeon will mark the correct side you are having surgery on. 
The anesthesia team will discuss the type of anesthesia they will be using. We use two different types of anesthesia, spinal and general. Both are great options, but how they decide which one you will receive depends on your surgeon, health history, and what surgery you're having done. The care team will connect you to the heart monitor where they will monitor you before, during, and after surgery. This process may take around one hour. Approximate surgery times. The surgery times vary depending on each patient, what procedure you are having done, and your surgeon. The average time for a total knee or hip replacement is usually around an hour to an hour and a half. If you are having a knee or hip revision, it is around two hours. If you are having both knees or hips replaced, the surgery is around two and a half to three hours. After surgery, you will be taken to the recovery room. In the recovery room, you will be closely monitored as you wake up from anesthesia. The nursing staff will help you stay comfortable and family or friends will be notified of your progress. You may see some tubes and equipment such as oxygen, a vital sign machine, IV fluids, a Foley catheter, or a surgical drain. The recovery time can differ depending on each patient, but is typically around one to three hours. If your surgeon discuss discharging home on the same day of surgery with you, the nurses and physical therapists will assist you with getting dressed, walking with the walker, and preparing for your discharge home. If your surgeon discuss staying overnight in the hospital, you will be transferred to your private room after surgery. Your surgeon and care team will help you determine when it will be safest and most appropriate to discharge you. It is important to start walking as soon as possible after surgery. Walking reduces your risk of blood clots, pneumonia, prevents stiffness and soreness, builds muscle, and improves your overall health. You may feel weak, so please have assistance and use your walker until your therapist or surgeon says you no longer need it. Do ankle pumps and use the incentive spirometer every hour while you are awake after surgery. Doing ankle pumps helps with blood circulation to help prevent blood clots. Using the incentive spirometer will help prevent pneumonia after surgery. Some patients may have a drain present after surgery. Your nurse will monitor this and remove it when it's necessary. Your care team will remove the surgical dressing and place a waterproof bandage over your incision. Instructions on how to care for your bandage and when to remove it will be discussed with you in your discharge instructions. Please read through these discharge instructions again when you are home. It does have very important information that you need to know about your recovery. The physical therapist will take you to the gym on the unit. There, there they will teach you how to go up and down stairs, how to get in and out of a car, and if you have a tub shower combo at home, they will practice that with you as well. You will be ready to go home once you have met your discharge goals. Your vital signs are normal, you are able to urinate, pain is controlled with oral pain medicine, and you have safely worked with physical therapy. If you spend the night in the hospital, please have someone at the hospital by 8.30 the next morning. Most patients are discharged by 10 a.m. Pain management. Immediately after surgery, you will not be pain free. The goal right after surgery is to have your pain at a tolerable level where you can still perform daily activities. The pain after surgery is different from the pain before surgery and the first two weeks after tend to be the toughest in regards to pain. Take your pain medication as prescribed it's important to take your medication before you have severe pain so that it has time to start working. While in the hospital, you will need to ask your nurse for pain medicine since it is on an as-needed basis and not a scheduled medicine. Swelling will also cause pain. Use ice packs and elevate your legs to keep the swelling down. The good news is that the pain after surgery is temporary. Constipation. Constipation is a common side effect when taking narcotic pain medication, and many experience constipation after having joint replacement surgery. After surgery, you are not eating, moving, or drinking like you were beforehand. Therefore, your bowel movements may be different. Staying hydrated, 
getting up and walking, and eating well-balanced meals can help prevent constipation. Once you leave the hospital, you will need to use over-the-counter stool softeners or laxatives to also help prevent constipation. You will continue to use these medications as long as you are on any pain medication or your bowel movements are regular again. After your joint replacement surgery, antibiotics may be required before any invasive procedures such as dental cleaning, oral surgery, or other procedures. Please consult with your surgeon on their specific recommendations. Blood thinners. After surgery, patients are at an increased risk for developing a blood clot. Your surgeon will prescribe you a blood thinner to take for a short period of time after surgery to decrease your risk of developing a blood clot. A complication of a blood clot is a pulmonary embolism, when a piece of the clot breaks off and travels to your lungs. Although developing a blood clot or a pulmonary embolism is rare, please be aware of symptoms and notify your surgeon immediately. Symptoms include increased swelling, warmth or tenderness of limbs, sharp calf pain, shortness of breath, increased heart rate, palpitations, or chest pain. Preventing infections. Infections after joint replacement surgeries are also rare. However, you should continue to take precautions to avoid infections after you are discharged. Keep pets, kids, and other hazards away from your incisional area. Wash your hands often to reduce germs and follow your discharge instructions from your surgeon. You now have the important information to prepare you before, during, and after your upcoming surgery. Please refer back to this video or to your Living with a Knee or Hip Replacement book if you need a refresher on anything that was covered. Be aware you will receive many phone calls from the hospital and physician offices as your surgery nears. Please return all calls in a timely manner. We are eager to make this process as simple as possible for you, so please contact your nurse navigator with any questions. Thank you for choosing Ascension St. Thomas for your upcoming surgery. We are ready to help you get back to the life you love.